please give it up for Mr. Matthias Gelber. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, hi. Good evening to all of you. Hi. Um, hi. It's nice to be here again. I was here a couple of days ago and we had a very green theme on. I don't know whether any of you attended the Awakening the Dreamer event. Yeah? Good? Good, good. That was very green. Uh, apparently my t-shirt is green as well. This is green actually. Uh, even though it might not look green, but uh, I don't know whether you can see it here. It's made from 100% recycled plastic bottles. I won't go too much into detail. Uh, about that subject, but my inner wear, or as we used to call it, underwear, <laughs> is made from organic cotton. So I try and do as much as possible green stuff. Because we've got a problem on the planet. We've got children, and we don't know what their future is going to be. Seven billion people, right? That's the latest count. I had a chat the other day with my two special friends here, and I'm sure our little friend might be interested. <laughs> this is uh, uh, our Malaysian turtle from Tioman Island. Have you seen a turtle before? <laughs> little turtle here. You know the turtle? You know, she is very beautiful, right? And then we've got as well an elephant here. They are running around in Malaysia as well. This is a pygmy elephant. I saw one of those guys the other day, and they are not so big in Malaysia, but they are really beautiful. And this elephant here, you know, he's a little bit worried. Even he is worried about his children, because he is running around on one side of the Kota Kinapadangan River, and on the other side, already the palm oil plantations have moved to the river bank, which is not even legal, but it's happening. So where are his kids going to run around? Then the beautiful turtle from Tioman Island, what happens with her eggs? They get poached. Less and less turtles. Since the Industrial Revolution, we humans have made sure that 80% of the big mammals have disappeared. What about climate change? What about the concentration of pollutants out there? I'm sometimes wondering, you know, if we think, or if we would look at the planet like the little green man on the moon. When the Industrial Revolution started, we started seeing smoke. The humans started to realize, well, we can turn this stuff that we can burn into energy. We can power the kilns. We can get steam. We can get machines that make things happen. We started to mine the coal. Nowadays, we even chop down the Ipoh limestone mountains to make cement. Did you know that limestone is calcium carbonate? Mother Nature, over millions of years, captured the CO2 in the form of carbonate, CaCO3. Now we are burning it at 1,400 Celsius to release one ton of carbon dioxide to produce one ton of cement. Hardly anyone knows that. All the things we have created, we humans, Within a short period of time, a glimpse in the history of this planet, we are digging up everything we can find. We are squeezing Mother Nature, the planet, to the maximum, grabbing the oil, grabbing the gas, grabbing the coal to fuel our model of economic development. That might be a problem for our children and their children. We're still doing okay now, right? <laughs> you know. We still have big cars, big houses, loads of money floating around. Maybe our education, I'm not so sure whether it's the education system, has educated us to believe that our value is based on how big our house and how big our cars, rather than our inner values that are truly much more important than all this other stuff. What really matters, the maths and the other stuff that we learn in school, maybe it doesn't really matter that much, but the skills that you have out there and the language knowledge. And believe it or not, I grew up in a small kampong in Germany, a little village, and my command of English was non-existent because of my mindset. 
I was thinking I'm wasting my time. I was thinking, why would I learn English? I'd never met an English speaking person at that point in time. <laughs> For me, that world didn't exist. And the worst grades I ever got in my whole school career were in English. In the German system, it's from one to six. If you have two fives if, in your final certificate, you're not allowed to pass on. You do sit and climb, sit again. You have to do the whole year again. And the only ever five I had in my final certificate in the whole school career was in English. <laughs> so there's hope for everyone because it depends on our mindset. Now it's my biggest asset while I travel the world and try and inspire people to live green, to buy green, to invest green, to offer green. Because otherwise, if we continue to screw the planet as we've been doing now, I don't see any hope for our future generation. We talk about saving the planet, but ultimately, it's about saving the human race. The planet will adjust. Does the planet bother about the tsunami? It ain't a problem for the planet. The animals were on the hill already. A little bit more water, no problem. Maybe a million years Malaysia was covered by ice. Maybe a million years ago Malaysia was covered by water. Who bothers? The planet doesn't care. But it's our asset. Our assets. Our representation of human wealth. Plus our modern society, the humans, especially those in countries that are lesser developed. They don't have the money and resources to build up big walls. Like the Stern report that was done by the UK economist that was looking at how much is it going to cost us to adjust in 100 to 200 years times the effect of climate change. We think going green is expensive. But the other way is the truth. Not going green now is going to cost humanity ridiculous amount of money for future generations. We think not going green is cheap. But the truth is, if we in the short term exploit all of our natural resources for short term benefit, we damage the asset value of what a forest can do for future generations. It's easy to make money in the short term by chopping down an old rainforest, but the value that the trees deliver by holding the soil together, capturing the water, avoiding floods, avoiding landslides, cleaning up the water. Have you seen rivers where natives in Malaysia used to catch fishes in after the hill upstream has been chopped? Those rivers are finished. Waterfalls are disappearing. There's a massive loss in value. We think our vegetables that are not organic are cheap. What about the pesticide pollution, soil pollution? What about our cheap clothes that have toxic contents in them that create rashes, health issues? What about the air pollution that costs the country loads and loads of money in actually treating people's respiratory problems? Water is cheap, right? That means we can waste it. Doesn't cost anything or hardly anything. Did you know Malaysia is in the process of building a water pipe from Pahang to Selangor? Original budget, 3.9 billion. Latest cost estimates, 8 billion plus. Calculate how much taxpayers' money that will cost every Malaysian. That's the true cost already here operationally in not going green. Never mind when things change out there and sea levels might rise in the near future. Four meters higher sea levels and the old town of Malacca is underwater. How do we address these issues in terms of education, in terms of business, in terms of skills? We need urgently people, young people in this country to help the economy going green. One of the organizations that I represent, LOHA, stands for Lifestyle of Health and Sustainability. It's about our power as consumers to buy stuff that helps the planet and helps our health at the same time. Are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution? Is our education system part of the problem or is it part of the solution? How much do young people learn in our education system? 
to reconnect back with Mother Nature, to learn practical things that can be done. I've started working with a local college, Green City College. The reason why I started working with them because I was impressed with their commitment to both operationally run their college in a green way and at the same time deliver green courses. Malaysia expects by 2020 to have about 300,000 jobs needed in the arena of green technology. Green technology is an emerging trend that's being pushed by the government. The government has realized they can't re rely on the exploitation of natural resources. If you look at the Malaysian economy, oil, gas, timber, palm oil, real estate, tourism, that's it. Take that away from the country, then the country has a problem in terms of generating wealth. You can't go on like that. You need to create wealth with innovation. And green technology is seen as one of the main opportunities in the country. But how do you make that happen? In the absence of people that have R&D skills, that have innovation skills, that understand what green technology is about. So Green City College has developed four courses. Diploma in Green Technology Management, Diploma in Green Buildings. More and more buildings are being designed to be more eco-friendly. There's a Green Building Index in Malaysia. You can get certification for that. There is a Green Building um, program that a lot of the buildings are now being certified against. When you look at the building opposite to Mid Valley, they are building there now, it's called Kea Eco City. So there's loads and loads of stuff going on in that area. My friend Najib, not the one you're thinking of now. <laughs> he studied in New Zealand. He came back two years ago. He studied green building design. His dad was very worried, because his dad thought, you ain't gonna go get a job when you come back to Malaysia. He applied for eight different jobs. He got eight invites. He got eight job offers. His friends who study what Malaysian parents think is the right way to have success in society, stuff like accountancy and all of these other boring subjects where there are loads and loads of people out there that have been forced to study it because the dollar signs are up there in the eyes of parents and maybe in their eyes, but they have no, got no passion for the subject, no interest in the subject, but it's supposed to be a means to an end. His friend who did accountancy didn't find it that easy, just sending out eight applications, getting eight invites, getting eight job offers. The biggest problem Green City College has got at this point in time is to convince Malaysian parents that the passion of their children, that they want to do something good in their future, and for that reason they would like to get an environmental, a green tech education, that that is financially sustainable. I started a movement on Facebook called Eco Warriors Malaysia, a voluntary movement. We've done a lot of tree planting, recycling initiatives, stuff like that. Some of my Eco Warriors sometimes come to me and say, hey, I want to do green stuff. I want to do environmental science, I want to do green technology, but my parents don't allow me to because they tell me you're going to be poor all your life. <laughs> that's the reality out there. So that's my question for you guys. How can we overcome that? There's a college there that's committed, that's passionate. They're investing a lot of money in getting these courses off the ground, but they're struggling to get students signed up even though Malaysian youngsters are interested in going for it, but their parents is the main bottleneck. Their parents, who they financially depend on, and to exercise their influence to tell them, yes, no. Okay la, not okay la. <laughs> so how can we overcome that bottleneck? The planet needs those committed people and I've had several times Malaysian businesses approach me and ask me, hey, have you got these people already? We are looking for them. We are waiting for them. We want people with commitment in this area that are actually clued up on the subjects. The big trends are green building, renewable energy, as well 
more healthy food production. Biomass is a big issue. How can we turn all the biomass waste into valuable product? My business card, by the way, is made from waste material. No tree was chopped down. This stuff is available. Are you actually implementing in your lifestyle with your purchasing power, with your consumption power, an attitude that is part of healing the planet? Or are you part of the system that destroys the planet? Thanks. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Once you get a run, uh, would anyone like to ask a question? Yeah. You mentioned that your friend Najib has a really easy time getting a job. Yes. Had an easy time getting a job, a degree. Yes. Can you document uh, how much in demand these jobs are? Because that's mm. what parents want to know. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that is one of the things I've recently discussed with Green City College. Actually, we had a discussion literally today about it. You're spot on. We need to come up with that stuff. We need to come up with the statistics. Actually, Frost and Sullivan, this uh, uh, research and consultancy organization, they did a study for the Malaysian government on trends. <coughs> At the moment, they estimate about 2% of uh, um, economic activity is linked to green, green technology. That will go up to 6%. And um, I actually gave a talk on this uh, to some potential students, but not really a lot of them turned up, where I asked Najib to come in uh, and give a, uh, a case study. And we videoed him actually telling a story. But we need to uh, get the numbers, how many of these jobs are out there. Like I posted yesterday on my Facebook page, another Malaysian company, a printing company, they are looking for an eco-advisor on how to make their printing process more eco-friendly and how to then sell to customers eco-friendly. So these jobs are starting to crop up and we need to document it and we need to give people a clear idea how much of it is out there. What, what are the job opportunities? I agree. I've got an interesting, yeah. I mean, the edit camp has been so interesting because when I bring different people coming in and stuff. Um, so just now Rick was just saying, you know, we are doing great. Here the grades, score it, and you get passed. And then now there's this green building initiative, which is a, again a certification process, which is also like a it's a, like a test. Mm. Um, and basically, you know, like like what Rico was saying, tests are made to be cheated. Yes. And that is a problem right now as well because uh, my sister is actually a green engineer. Mm. She's a thermal assessment specialist in Australia. Okay. Uh, and she basically got right into the thick of it. She's also part of the whole green certification uh, green certification panel. Yeah. And she's basically saying that it's a problem because of the whole education, exam-oriented, industrial revolution mm. thing. The green guidelines is just like an exam. Yeah. And she's basically saying that we are not doing enough. Yeah. We are still not thinking enough. Yeah, so you just build a green building, it's, it's gold certified, mm. you get tax exam status. But I'm not saying that it's not a good step forward, yeah. but she's saying that, you know what, we need to do more. Yeah. You know, and, and, she, and, and she saw like, uh, she got a lot of job offers in Malaysia, but it was all, again, I'm not discounting that, yes, it must be done. Being green certified is still better than not being green certified. But she's basically saying that, you know what, it's because of the whole exam and industrial thing, and we just need a, certi we just need a certificate. And the government is basically, again, just wanting to do that because it's still fueling the ignorance. That's what I think is, a, 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 what, what my sister's trying to slap into my face and say, like, you know what, you guys are like, you know, the speculators and the investors, yeah, we're gonna invest in green building now because it's gonna cost, you know, it's got to appreciate more because there's tax laws and stuff. It is still part of like what Ricard was outlining. It's, 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 uh, yeah. it's, this is the product of the education system. Yeah, I mean, um, if we wait yeah. till the underlying system changes, it's, it's going to be too late yes. anyway. Yes. I would love us to all do barter trade, live from our locally produced uh, food products yes. that we grow in our backyard and get rid of the whole financial system yes. and basically <laughs> go back to basics and uh, you know live in tune with the live in tune with the planet create healthy communities create uh, an utopia or a no asia where we have a benign influence on the planet rather than a destructive influence on the planet but we're not living in that reality 
We have a machinery out there that exploits this planet, that squeezes everything out that it can get, you know, from the last drop yes. that it can find. Yes. And within that reality, I need to make change by talking a business language. You know, I used to be running around trying to mobilize people, go green, live green. It makes zero impact in Malaysia. So you got like yeah. hour, six I, I know <laughs> this, yeah. I mean, I know they have to talk about, you know, how you can make money by going green. Otherwise, nobody listens. <laughs> and, you know, that is maybe I'm going back into the system. Yeah. Maybe one day I go back to a revolutionary after I've made enough <laughs> money <laughs> in the system. But coming back to that essential point, yes. the scoring system is powerful and dangerous at the same time. You know, it creates an attraction for people to get their building certified. And false, once you have that attraction, false sense of um, green, yes, know? yes yeah. and no, yeah. yes and no. Um, senior managers are willing to spend money on it mm. because they want the badge. Yes. But I used to be a guru on environmental management systems, mm. traveling around the world. Mm. I've been in 40 different countries giving talks on ISO 14001. But I stopped it at one point in time because, especially when I came to Malaysia, because it's just certificate hunting. And uh, even from a consultant's perspective, you know, uh, the, the money that people are willing to pay here for good advice is, is peanuts. So when you pay peanuts, you get a lot of monkeys doing your business. <laughs> and uh, you know, so there was no point. Or they ask you like, what's the bare minimum do yeah, I need to do yeah. to, get the, to get this certification? Yeah. And you're like, and these systems don't work if you do it that way. Yep. Because you don't deliver any value. No. You just deliver paperwork. And I was a part of the committee that wrote the yep. standard. We tried to get rid of paperwork as much as possible. But the green building thing, yep. the most impressive green building I've seen in the region is a school in Singapore. They had not the goal to get certified. They got certified. But their goal was radically green, think out of the box, and save money. They, everybody thinks a green building is going to cost you more. You even have got tax incentives in Malaysia for extra costs that you need to spend to make your building green. Which predictably makes Which it Which predictably makes it yeah. worse, yes. <laughs> and then, you know, sometimes people actually spend more on more expensive stuff because they know they can get the tax rebate. Or other things happen. But if you look at one issue like solar, solar is expensive, there is no way out. The ROI is in the medium or long term. Yep. So, uh, but then is solar at this point in time the most cost effective route towards renewable energy? That's another question. But coming back to this building in Singapore, their goal was um, as green as possible, as cost effective as possible, radical new thinking. For example, their toilets are not inside somewhere in the darkness with a duct that's 100 meter long where you need to push in fresh air. Their toilets are outside. They took out the concrete wall, and you've got the fresh air there, and you look outside on the green. You don't need a duct that pumps in air or sucks in air out. And they saved on the concrete wall as well. And uh, their whole piping system is as straight as it can be. You can see it. It's everywhere. Uh, it's visually available. Normally, it's hidden everywhere. For they cosmetic need, reasons, yeah, yeah. They need 20 horsepower pumps. Other people need 50 horsepower pumps. So they've saved everywhere. Their construction cost was 7% less than a conventional building. Their operational costs verified, they've got all the data there, is 1.5 million ringgit cheaper to run every year than a similar building, similar size standard. So they actually were commercially hugely successful. They have a very healthy living climate. If you compare some of the toxic buildings that we have created with all sorts of nasty stuff inside, you go to Malaysian construction sites, you see bottles there that is being used as building material, no name on there, just a death skull symbol. <laughs> That's what you can find, you know. We are actually damaging our health downstairs, you know. The guys there, Malaluka. Yeah. I was here last Sunday. They are selling a product that's supposed to be increasing our health. When I walked along there, I could smell the toxic solvent <laughs> coming from their building. Then I checked, yeah, the contractor had used the glue to fix the, the, uh, some of the things there stuff, yes. with toxic solvent in there. It didn't say toxic on there, but it said on there, I even took a picture, it said on there, 
not to be allowed indoor unless it's very well ventilated, right? Contact him, to read. There we go. So, so I need to know from you guys, how can we convince parents to believe in this new economy for the sake of their youngsters that are actually motivated to follow their passion and do a job that can deliver good and earn good money at the same time. So I'll, I'll leave. Sorry? You have to go to school. Would you, would you be impressed to come and speak to a yeah. teenager? Yeah, sure, and sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Are you from a school as well? Um, um, I have connections. So. <laughs> That's good enough. Um, right I, I, I could probably, I, I, you know, I would, I would love to get you in yeah. contact with them and then, okay. you know, move from yes. there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the key, isn't it? Yeah. It's just the children. Yeah. Part of it is the children. Because this is something that I think they're even remotely aware of as a profession. Yeah. Traditional uh, job types that they're very aware of. I, I, I think, though, half, half of the battle only will be won by approaching the children. Mm -hmm. But at least it's better than nothing. Because, as um, Matthias pointed out just now, the problem is the parents yeah. disagreeing and saying, well, no, 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 sorry, that just doesn't measure up. We can't have that kind of, yeah. you know, person in the family. Yeah. We must have a, an accountant. So I, yeah. I think, but the beginning has to be somewhere. And I think kids kids are the ones who are receptive to these things. Because when you when you reach them, when they haven't reached the age yet, where they're already making those sins and, and you know, defiling our, our planet, yeah. it's, it, it's, um, it hits them in a more personal yeah. way. Yeah. And they, as you pointed out with your, your green worries. Yeah, yeah. that's yes. right. Eco worries. Eco worries, Eco -worries. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So, so it, it's meaningful for them. Yeah. And so they feel that the, the value in yeah. rather than just the need to pursue a career because, you know, that's uh, the means to the end. Yeah. And it's easy to motivate kids if you can. It's not just a job. If you can it down to something a bit practical, get them to do something like a project related to what can you do for your school or your community that can change things around in terms of uh, the, the vision of green. So what can you do? Come up with the project type. Yeah. Kids love, so far what I've seen mostly uh, at this at school I work for is kids enjoy projects because they come from the Malaysian education system, it's an international school. Them. It's a new school. So they come into this environment, projects are brand new for them. The idea of presentation, doing things, creating things, it's brand new and then they love it. Yeah. They thrive in it. So if, if, if you could like connect the dots, you know, the kids you do project and that's connected to the college and they get they get that connection. So where let's say the kids who showcase certain skills, yeah. out of the box thinking, actually yeah. impressed and passionate. Can be channeled in through, you know, consultation to parents mm -hmm. into the college. Right. Uh, so it's, it's something like that that I was thinking of when you were talking. Good. So you gotta, you get we need your help. Yeah. Reach out to these fellows. Yeah. But but don't give up what you do with the, with the business people and just mm. just milk them all for all their work. Yeah. No, I, I I try my best. Because you know. because you know. my sister basically said no, I don't I don't want to do that. She she she's gone back to Australia mm -hmm. and she's working with the communities there to take it even further. She's basically said, you know, this, this whole green certification thing is bullshit. We need to do more. We need to, yeah. and, and we need to prove it. We need to show that, yeah. you know, it's like what Rika was saying, the curve. And the whole green, eco, everybody's like, yeah, 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 eco, eco, eco. But everybody just want to stay around here. Okay, we're a little bit better than that. Oh, I'm not using plastic. But, you know, on, 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 you know like, like even school as, as well, on one end, they're doing eco awareness as an extracurricular activity. Yeah. But in the meantime, I need you to buy 10 more exercise books, chop down more yeah. trees, I, and I need to buy those textbooks, I need to wrap it in plastic yeah, yeah. to protect it. Yeah. <laughs> and it actually, yeah. to square the circle, Green City College, they've actually decided to deliver all of their education uh, through electronic means. They're the first college that have bought 100% recycled office paper from a friend of mine who's just brought it into Malaysia. And I'll actually be, I have a regular slot on breakfast television, mm. on TV2, Hello on 2. They always bring the green yeah. man in Monday morning at 7.35. This week, I'll be bringing Green City College nice. in. So you can watch us on uh, 
TV2 on Monday morning, uh, 7.35. And interestingly enough, on Saturday, I'm speaking at Fuji School, refugee school for Somalia kids. Wow. Deborah Henry, uh, Miss Malaysia World 2011, started that school. Yes. Uh, and uh, I'm speaking to them about the okay. green economy and the green future. And I'm trying to drag them for a talk here as well. Excellent. Excellent. It's interesting. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah, it all connects. Ricard wants to... Yeah, I want to add one uh, perspective from mm. the dark side. <laughs> uh, which is that when it comes to uh, ecology or mm. green thinking, or even thinking about the future or anything, it has, it has to be founded on compassion and empathy. The problem is that the, the, for example, like the education system that I found now is actively working to take that out of the kids. So, 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 so they are doing it really effectively. I mean, if the, the level of brainwashing techniques that they are applying is perfect. It's a hundred years of improving yeah. it and iterating it. It's, I'm, 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 Come I'm on. actually impressed. Yeah, it is. Uh, so that is a problem because when you don't have empathy and compassion for your peers or for your future self, it's really hard to grasp this yeah. kind of concept. Yeah. If you don't have empathy and compassion, this is like it's like trying to explain quantum physics to a dog. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> you know, it's conceptually really hard to understand. Yeah. And so, so that is also one of the reasons why I think we need to really change not only what kids learn, but how they learn it, how they relate to each other. And that is a very, very big question. Uh, and it's really hard to change. We yeah. need more hours of moral, write an essay on empathy. Okay, I was kidding. <laughs> this is interesting because I wanted my daughter to become a green engineer. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> No, she's, she's halfway through medical school. She wants to become a doctor. I think partly it's because the money is better. Um, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, are you sure? From, from, the, from the father. <laughs> no, I think, I think in one way, yes. In one way, the traditional parent will say, you know, go where the money is, kind, uh, kind of thing. You know, the, the professional doctor, yeah. lawyer, and so on. I think the other thing about, uh, about what you said, um, are we living to preserve the planet or to destroy it? And that's something that I think we're not, um, we may be aware of it, but we're not living it out. The kids see us, mommy, daddy, doesn't make any impact on them, why should you, you know, be different from me? Um, they don't take it, they don't have the empathy because they don't see it around them. They don't see it in their parents. So a lot of it is like, you know, we want our kids to be something, but we are showing them the complete opposite of what we want them to be. And that's how they turn out to be like that. The other thing is, uh, of course, uh, we're in the day of instant gratification. A lot of kids, everything is instant. So they're willing to put the future of the planet, you know, at stake because they want to enjoy what, what the, the moment is. <laughs> We are not teaching them that someday that future is going to hit them. Um, but to most people, like you say, everything is fine. You know, the sea, the sea is still green so far, or blue. Um, so we're not worried. I think that's those those are the th those are the things that we have to look at. Um, and I think the fingers still pointing back at us um, as parents. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you, my guys. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just.